Hello, my beautiful people. I am finally back. So, here's a crazy week. In addition to it being Thanksgiving and having to clean this house, which, you know, people always say, like, Oh, you do so much. What don't you do? Well, apparently it's not tidy up around here. It's not dirty, but it's just, like, there's clutter everywhere, and I have so much stuff. And Dave has so much stuff, and the kids have so much stuff, and, oh, my gosh. And, uh, you know, it's really a game of, like, don't open any of the doors upstairs because... <laughs> God only knows what'll jump out at you. So there was that, getting ready for Thanksgiving, cooking and being with family and, and uh just a really great time. And then um uh we've had um uh we uh our son, as you know if you watch the channel, had a stroke in utero and so he has scoliosis. And so we've been tracking him uh, his whole life. He wore a brace, like if you read the book Dini or saw Romy and Michelle's uh, high school reunion. He wore a brace for a while, but it didn't help him because um, his scoliosis isn't bone related. It's neurologically related. And so um, about five years ago, we had him up at a specialized um, hospital for special surgery, which is in Manhattan. Um, it is the best. Um, I think they've been ranked number one in the world for 14 years straight for orthopedics. Um, so like it is the place where all like the Olympic teams go and all of the... Um, all the sports teams in New York in New York go, and uh, I mean I'm terrified of big cities because I'm terrified of traffic, uh, but I love my son, so I will take him to the best place there is. And so we had him there five years ago, but they weren't quite sure he was done growing. They said come back in five years. He had some an episode of gout, which I didn't know could happen to people who weren't 87 and you know alcoholics, um, but apparently it's genetic. And uh, his biological grandfather had it, and. Uh, his aunts and uncles and cousins have it. So, um, so we took him to New York and he's going to have spinal fusion. So we've had a lot going on. And in the meantime, while all that was going on, the screen recorder that I used to make my videos, which is called Screencast-O-Matic, switched names. I don't know if they were bought out or what, but I couldn't get it, the new version of it to work. So I'm trying all these other platforms, and they're all very fancy. I'm like, I don't want fancy. Like, fancy is for at work. What I want is a cup of tea with you in my kitchen. I want all this nonsense. I want to be able to record my video and put it on YouTube. And that's what I want to do. Um, I finally, finally, at... Six o'clock this morning. Don't look at that clock. That battery's dead. Um, finally, finally, after two days, figured this stupid thing out. So here we are. And we're going to read some runes. Actually, before I read runes, as I prepare them, you know, it's funny how things kind of like how spirit works things out. Like, Julian was due to go for this five-year review, but I hadn't thought about it. Um, I had thought about it because his neurologist, his pediatric neurologist, had wanted him to be seen before he saw them. So it was kind of in the back of my mind. I better make an appointment. Um, but then Julian had this episode of gout, which was terrifying for him, terrifying for us because we didn't know what was wrong with him. We couldn't. He his communication broke down. We couldn't figure it out. And um, you know, so like we get this appointment. So even though the gout was a horrible thing, um, and then we found out it was genetic, which I didn't know that because I don't have access to that grandfather's health records or anything like that. So, you know, so it was just like, you know, it was a guessing game, right? So, you know, the gout is treated. He's feeling much better. He's back to school and he's excited and he's dancing like crazy upstairs. Um, you know, we, but that leads us to make the appointment. So we go and when we saw the x-rays of his spine, you know, like, from five years ago, there's a significant, pretty much his, um, his spine is collapsing on itself. So, um, the way I explained it to him, because, you know, you know, he's like autistic, so you have to kind of explain things, break it down is, um, cause he didn't understand like what it was. I said, well, in our town, we have one main street. It's one mile long. And it's called Delaware Avenue. It's straight down, straight down the street, one mile. I said, well, you know, you know how like, Delaware Avenue. It's just like a straight street. And then there's stores on either side. There's Papa Al's on one side and then there's Carbon Mart on the other side. I said, well, over your lifetime, you know, we've watched the, you know, the road kind of is becoming an S, right? And it's getting closer to people's houses. It's getting closer to going into Papa Al's and it hasn't gotten there yet. So we didn't have to worry about it. But, but now, you know, now it's getting pretty close. And if we don't 
fix the road, the road's going to go through Papa Al's. And Papa Al's is like your liver. And Carbon Mart's like, you know, your your kidneys. Like, we have to fix the road because we can't move the houses. So that's what we have to do. And he said, okay, Mom, okay. And then he was just terrified because his brother, my other son, keeps telling them they're going to shove a stick up his butt. I'm like, stop telling him that. Cause, and he, so he blurts out to the doctor, I don't want to stick up my butt. And he's like, I don't put a stick up your butt. And I'm like, well, that's what his brother tells him. The The PA started laughing. I'm, I'm like, he said, like, well, let me show you what they look like. So he shows him these titanium rods that they put in. And pretty much, from what I can tell, it looks like he's going to be like a tomato plant. Like they're going to like put a structure around his spine to straighten him up. He said, you'll be taller. He used to be the tallest of the grandchildren. And then now he's the shortest because my nephews and my other son are just, they're all giants. The four of them are giants. And um, so... So we're prepared for this. So, so anyway, so while we're watching these, these, like while the doctor, while the nurse, uh, the nurse was asking all kinds of questions to get prepared for surgery, she looks at me and she just blurts out, who's Gunther? I'm like, Gunther. And it's funny, the person who is Gunther is the person who told me to go to hospital for special surgery. Um, he is, you know, everybody has to go work, spouse, work wife, work husband. He's my work wife, or I'm his work wife. And um, and he and I have been, you know, he and I have worked together for years now, both in New Jersey and here in Pennsylvania. And, um, and like, because I was really nervous, you know, sitting there, you know, when it's your kid, like when it's me, I've had a lot of surgeries. Um, and, you know, when it's me, it's one thing, but when it's your kid, it's like a whole other thing. So, you know, I, I was all nervous and she she just blurted down. She goes, well, who's Gunther? I'm like, and, and our last name is Guth. So, I mean, it could be just, you know, just a coincidence that she said that. But I said, well, that's the person who referred me to um, this hospital when the when the pediatric neurologist five years ago said you need to be seen by an orthopedic my friend was like, this, this is the place you need to go. And here's all the people that they work on, the, the Olympic teams, elite athletes and all this, the Mets and the Giants and all that. And so um, I just, and, and instantly I was comforted, like, okay, like we're doing the right thing for Julian. Like, this is where we need to be. We knew this was going to come. We knew this was going to happen. Um, you know, it's a, it's, you know, there's never a great time to have surgery in your life, but you know, he's 21, he lives at home. You know he you know he's in our care so this is you know a good time to have to have the surgery you know better than when he's 40 years old and i'm 80 years old right so um so you know so you know it's just funny how spirit works and then you know like the gout like i had no access to like you know knowing what is other grandfather had or that his other grandfather existed to be honest um you know because i don't know too much about that family but um to find out that it is genetic and that you know that didn't come from the stroke that the the gout is uh is from genetics so um so it was so helpful to have that information um you know and so it's just funny how you find out the things that spirit wants you to know and spirit thinks you're ready to know when you're ready to know it and so we're comforted by that. But now that I have blabbered on for eight minutes and 40 seconds, let's read some runes, shall we? Just going to get an energy pool. Oh, let's see. Let us do three norns, shall we? Ah, Kibo. Gift. How do we get to Gibo? Mm. And Menace. And how, where are we going? Where are we going with this gift? We are going to Therizaz. Hmm. All right, I am going to go take a look-see at these stones. I'm going to think about them, talk to Spirit, and see what they have to say. I shall return in a lickety-split. So, how appropriate are these stones? I always say that. But Iwas, um, 
this is EY is not mana's. They they look very much the same. The difference is in the in mana's there's like an X2, but like my eyesight's so poor, so I have to like hold it up and see it. So that's EY's. And um it it translates to horse, and that's like transportation and movement. And um just so you have the words, um transportation, movement, progress, trust and trust and change. And certainly having gone to the doctor like that, we have to trust. This is the best thing for him. And uh, I'm really joyful right now that I get to talk to you. But I'm also joyful that we have a plan for Julian, right? Because even though it is terrifying to um, have such an extensive surgery on someone so young and limited, um, there's also some joy in having it settled, right? Because we always knew, we always knew that spinal fusion was going to be the thing, right? It was just a matter of when that thing was going to be. Was it going to be now? Was it going to be when he's in his 60s? Like when, when was it going to be? And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's joy in making the connections with spirit. There's joy in knowing that you're held in, in people's prayers on Facebook. So many people have said kind things. So many people have written so many nice notes. Um, some people who've had that doctor, have, Dr. Blanco, have written and said how wonderful he is. Like, there's just a lot of support and love and joy that comes from that. Um, but there's hard work ahead, right? Like, um, you know, it is a, a big surgery. It requires recovery. And, you know, Julian is limited in capacity. So um, I've had extensive surgeries, um, extensive surgeries. And recovery is always tough but i am i am tough as nails like i i am tough when it, when i need to be i'm a soft day at heart but i'm tough when it comes to that kind of thing so um you know so it's not going to be easy and i have to just be reminded that it's not he's not going to be perhaps as resilient as me but he also is very resilient in a way like he's more resilient in a lot of ways than my other son like he can bounce back better he doesn't complain as much my oldest son is such a complainer but julian really isn't like you know he'll he'll like if you save like, his chore is to empty the dishwasher and i'll be like oh crap but he'll do it like he'll do it my other son like makes this huge production out of it and it's like oh my god yeah i asked you to move a table i didn't ask you to like you know cone a battle <laughs> so you know just a reminder that it's not going to be easy it is going to be a pain in the ass because we're going to have to drive to new york we're going to have to stay in new york um i'm going to stay in the hospital with him um we'll probably stay in the ronald mcdonald house my husband and his mother um we'll stay there while i'm in the hospital we'll staying with julian you know so there's going to be there's going to be like just you know, points of friction along the way as we organize because we do live three hours away. Um, it wouldn't be three hours if traffic in New York didn't suck, but, you know, it's only like 80 miles, but it takes three hours, it took us three hours to get home the other night. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be easy, but it is going to be worth it because it's, it's definitely what he needs. It's the best hospital to have it done and it's time, right? So, let us see what the cards have to say, shall we? Cards are, I'm so sorry to be so chatty today, but I'm so excited to see you. And uh, we'll start with Shadows of Light, um, because I've been away for so long, and now my this screen thing works, and let's see what the... to back up my computer, so I can shuffle. Three shuffles. One... I think it's also a reminder just not to let um, the things that make it a pin in the rear end like overwhelm or overcome the joy of um, him having a really healthy future. All right, pass one. And I'm not a fan of New York, by the way. I've lived in big cities. Not a fan. Why I live in the house. My goodness. A ton of cars coming out. Sure, it has lots to say today. All right. Let's see what his spirit had to say. We have acceptance, surrender. You know, accept that this is what has to happen for Julian's sake. We have intuition, knowing that it's the right thing. 
right? Sometimes we're going to let our fear direct us. And, uh, you know, it's terrifying to think of your son going through such a surgery. Stability. You know, like, I can't, you know, it, I, I try, try to tell my mother-in-law, she just cries. I'm like, don't do that because it, it, it provides an energy that we don't want Julian to be in. We want Julian to be confident. We don't want him to be nervous. We don't want him to be afraid. And he gets how he's going to feel about it from us. Did I want to break down in absolute tears in that doctor's office? Absolutely 100%. It was in the back of my mind. But I didn't. I made jokes. I made. We talked about bat fink. I talked about any single thing I could in the car. I was upbeat, you know, and, and I told them we were going to sing the Stump in the Rump song for him when he came home, when he came out of recovery. Like, I try to make light of it um, so that he's going to take his cues from us, right? He needs us to be stable. That helps him to be stable. Did I later in the bathroom when nobody was around ball my eyes out? You bet your ass I did. Perception. You know, what we perceive is good and right. Um, how we perceive uh, the information that we're given and how we perceive the situation impacts him, right? It impacts how he's going to perceive it. So, again, you know, just great reminders from spirit. Love. You know, we love our children unconditionally and we do anything for them. And that is evidenced by me going into the city because I don't like New York City. I've been there many, many times. You just have to go to the Googleplex all the time. I hate it. I'm not a fan. But I'm a fan of my kid. Sovereignty. These all came out together. Turmoil and benevolence. These came out as a, a chunk and they came and it came out separate and I didn't feel connected to them when they came. So I'm not going to consider these part of the reading. I think those just might have fell out. I feel like this is the packet. You know, what we're doing is good for Julian. And and it's up to us, the adults, that support him to help him navigate this time. Let us see what Earth Wisdom has to say, shall we? Uh, Hestia and I have a box to unbox. Oh, yeah. What am I doing? I'm shuffling. Don't do it. It's funny. I, I, I'm not, I'm trying to get into the Christmas spirit. And uh, we were on the side of Manhattan that all the cool stuff is not. Right. So we weren't by Rockefeller or anything like that. And, uh, you know, and I just don't like New York. I used to go there all the time when we were young. And then I used to go there for work. I take the train in though, it's a little bit easier than driving in. I hate driving in the city. I hate driving in the country too, to be honest. All right, three passes. Anything else to go with our readings? Okay, we just got one. We got. Clear aura, which is usually just a sign to like clear out all the noise, right? Be able to focus, clean your space and your energy so that you are focusing your energy in the right direction, right? And certainly for Julian's sake, we need to do that. We need to not be crying and all over ourselves and, and making, you know, you know, making him more nervous. We need to be positive and, uh, and know that he's got the best doctor in the world. He's at the best hospital in the world. You know, 14 years in a row, best hospital in the world. All right. Last but not least, our spirit, Celtic spirit friends. Oh, my gosh, I didn't shovel. What am I doing today? It's because it's 6.54 in the morning, and I've been up since 4. So, and I have to work. I have to work in an hour. Not much of a sleeper. I feel like I slept a lot in college, and so that I don't have to sleep now. One more. I had a nice, luxurious bath at 3.30 this morning. It's because it's quiet in my house. I feel like I like it. This is my favorite time because it's quiet. And after this, after I'm done with this, I'll go do some programming and some work um, because it's quiet. All right, three passes. 
I'm going to let it come out. Any passes from Spirit. Anything else we need to know? Okay, we have Master of the Hunt, Speed, Masculinity, and Flow. And that's really the um, the masculine energy of like being practical, right? We often think of practicality in masculine terms. I'm very practical. I am a romantic, you know, and, and it's funny. My students often say that. They're like, you kind of like are Emerson and Thoreau, but you're very Hawthorne. I am very Hawthorne. Very practical. And I'm practical when it comes to my son because we need to do what's right for him. And the other is the Weavers. Fate, manifestation, and decisions. What a perfect card. Like this, you can't sum it up better than this. You know, when you look at a spider's web, you know, I don't know if the spider knows what the design is going to be when they start spinning that web or if they just kind of like go along and go with the flow and make their connections. Um, but they're able to do all the things they need, catch food and, you know, have a little place to sit and terrify humans. You know, our lives are these giant webs, right? And all the pieces are interconnected and, and you know, Every, every piece is there and it's connected and, and so many connections, you know, starting from, you know, from his birth to now, you know, like it's like you can see the web, you can see the big web. And, um, you know, this was this is the role he he plays. He picked in this life and my role to be his mother. And um, I always I was thinking about this when we were driving home. We went five miles in one hour because it was rush hour. I mentioned I hate driving in New York City. Um, and I was thinking back to the mother um, at the Anglican convent that I was going to be uh, joining. And when she sat me down for that final conversation, the one that you have before you become a novitiate, she said, I don't think you're meant to be a sister. I think you're meant to be a mother. It is true. I was meant to be David and Julian's mother, and I am so blessed to be that. I am wishing you all the very best of might and love, and I will see you soon for reading, pull readings and some Advent stuff. We got some cool stuff coming up to help us all get ready for the season and bring meaning to the season, no matter what your religion or, or faith practice or belief. All right, be well, take care, bye-bye.